Yes. was the Heavenly Father's plan, made known by the angel Gabriel. And so it was a holy night, a night of heavenly splendor. In her fond memory of the first Christmas night, Holy Mother the Church remembers the glory of God in her music.
The church all over the world gathers to celebrate the birthday of Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior. The Nativity narratives of the scriptures tell us of the calmness that prevailed that first Christmas night when God took on human flesh in the person of his Son, Jesus Christ. As we join our hearts, reliving the great expectations of the first century, we must keep in prayer all those who are searching for peace and goodwill in their lives. They will find Jesus Christ. We pray to you for the land of Jesus' birth. May internal strife and struggle give way to a recognition of brotherhood and sisterhood, which makes us all children of the same Heavenly Father. Let us try to account in all who have gathered for worship. A little shuffle here and there may not deceive a few more people. Please follow all the directions of the ministers and hospitality. For all of our visitors, Holy Communion will be brought to you in the pews. Please remain seated with your hands extended, palm over palm. We cannot distribute Holy Communion on the tongue as a pandemic health restriction. Together, we join our voices in song and familiar melodies and lyrics that we have come to associate with this joyful season. In their own family members of the parishioners who received love from us at Sacramento Church, for our guests, we wish to make a contribution, there are envelopes available in the pews, or you can make a check or cash contribution in the collection basket. Please rise as you are able.
recognize God's covenant love for each one of us, and the times that we have failed to respond to that love. And so we take a moment to examine our hearts and to seek mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord, have mercy. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. For Zion's sake, I will not be silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet. Until her vindication shines forth like the dawn, and her victory like a burning torch. 
nations shall behold your vindication, and all the kings your glory. You shall be called by a new name, pronounced by the mouth of the Lord. You shall be a glorious crown in the land of the Lord, a royal diamond held by your God. No more shall people call you forsaken, or your land desolate. But you shall be called my delight, and your land espoused. For the Lord delights in you, and makes your land his spouse. As a young man marries a virgin, your builder shall marry you. And as a bridegroom rejoices in his bride, so shall your God rejoice in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Paul reached Antioch in Pisidia and entered the synagogue, he stood up, motioned with his hand, and said, Philip Israelites and you others who are God-fearing, listen. The God of this people Israel chose our ancestors and exalted the people during their sojourn in the land of Egypt. 
With uplifted arm, he led them out of it. Then he removed Saul and raised up David as king. Of him he testified. I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will carry out my every wish. From this man's descendants, God, according to his promise, has brought to Israel a Savior, Jesus. John heralded his coming by proclaiming a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was completing his course, he would say, What do you suppose that I am? I am not he. Behold, one is coming after me. I am not worthy to unfasten the sandals of his feet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. For it was through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you will name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place what the Lord had said through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took his wife into his home. He had no relations with her until she bore a son, and he named him Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, the gospel proclaims to us the verdict of the Savior, Jesus Christ, Son of God, God's provident God for us. Our time of Advent is over. We have 
prepared our hearts for the coming of Jesus Christ. And so our symbolism is to extinguish the Advent candles that we had. Which were in preparation for Christmas, the first Christmas, the Son of God come into this world. Yeah. 
As we look forward, O Lord, to the coming festivities, may we serve you all the more eagerly for knowing that in them you make manifest the beginnings of our redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and every prayer to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our minds, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and our angels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we have played. <laughs> We 
just as for the parents and friends, in all things we may be defended by your protecting hand. Therefore, O oh Lord, we pray, graciously accept the salvation of our servants, that of your own family, order our days in your and that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable. So that it may become for ours the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious child in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of Accept them 
as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar and high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar Receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have died. Let us pause to remember the deceased. Will, who live and reign forever and ever. 
Please remain seated. My friends, I skipped it a couple of times this past weekend, but I made sure that I'm going to do this at every Christmas fast. In church administration, when one is assigned to a large parish, he's assigned first as administrator, and then after a year or so, the bishop declares that it's a decree, it's a formal decree. It's registered not only here in Charleston, but let me tell you, it's registered in Rome. It's true, this is the church. So, our administrator, Father Rodolfo, this past week, was elevated as pastor of Metro Sacrament. Get the back here. Thank you. 